Hello everybody, I'm Nick and finally minimal APIs are better and more usable than ever. We finally got the most requested feature for them by far and that is validation. So in this video, I'm going to show you how validation will be implemented from .NET 10 onwards and what you'll have to do to either implement your own custom implementations or use the built-in one. So let's take a look at what we have here. I have a minimal API running on .NET 10 and it's a very basic customer's endpoint, it's a post endpoint and I'm just getting the name, email, and postcode of a user to potentially create it. Now, I'm just imitating that I'm returning a response after I created something, but this is just for demonstration purposes. And ultimately, what I want to do is I want to validate whether the name is valid or it's there, the email is valid, and whether the postcode is valid. That's like a UK postcode. So, minimal APIs didn't really have a way for you to validate the input of a request. We have in controllers all these attributes and other ways to do it. But if you want to do it with minimal APIs, you either have to add fluent validation or other ways of validating. And the idea was you choose your own path and there's no built-in way to do this. However, it's a very requested feature and not having it at all, well, it's not great for minimal APIs. So Microsoft finally added it. So how did they do it? Well, two things. The first thing you need is you need to add this add validation call on your service. This will wire all the stuff behind the scenes for validation. And then once you do that, what you can do, let's say you have an object like this here, is you can go on the items and say, let's say required. So now the name is required. Before having that, if I don't pass the value, the request will just go through. However, now if I have this here and I go ahead and I just do it everywhere here, then what's going to happen is every time someone's calling this API and any of these values are missing, the API will return an error saying, hey, what the hell, provide this value I needed. Now, this is not everything you need to do for this to work, and this is sort of the worst part of this developer experience, in my opinion, for this feature, and I hope Microsoft actually fixes it when this feature is launching, because it's a bit poo-poo. You have to go to the CS proj and you have to add this line over here, this interceptors, namespace, validation, generate. I mean, if you need any of this code, it will be in the description down below, but you need to have this here because this is very efficient because it works with generated interceptors behind the scenes. So now that we have this, if I went ahead and I just run this API and I go on Insomnia, then if I call this endpoint, you're going to see everything works. But if I don't provide the name, I'm going to say, hey, the name field is required. You cannot have this as empty. So if I provide it, it works. If I don't, it doesn't. And actually, just to show you a few things over here, you can see toot, 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 the validations generator that is being added that is creating the validator that is doing all this magic for us. So it's not necessarily like the runtime. It's a source generated interceptor. So how far can we go? Well, you can actually use the built-in email address validation as well to validate the email. There's many built-in things like minimum, maximum, within range that Microsoft has. You can use all of them here now too. And of course, you can use regex. So for example, if you want to validate the postcode to be a UK postcode, a valid UK postcode over here, then something like this will work. So if I run this now with these new items, and I go to Insomnia, well, if the email is not actually a valid email, I'm going to get email must be a valid email address. And also the postcode, if it's just like a, an American postcode, uh, obviously it's not going to work. It says over here that it needs to be a valid UK postcode. So more context, more really, really nice validation, but it doesn't stop there because these attributes are very limited in many ways. So what happens when you want to customize things? You have two really nice options. The first one is you can go on your object itself and you can implement the I validatable object interface. Once you do that, you're going to implement the missing member, which is this validate method over here. So you're getting the validation context, which includes tons of stuff like the display name, the items, member name, object instance, and a lot of other stuff. And you can even initialize a service provider. I'm going to have to read what that means. It's very interesting that it's here. But the way basically this works is let's say that, yeah, okay, this needs to be a valid UK postcode, but let's say that we only want to accept London people in, in this validation. Well, you can achieve that by having something like this, where you say, hey, I have logic here. I say, if regex does not match 
a UK London postcode, then this will just return and say, hey, sorry, mate, we only accept Londinians here. Uh, no other people from any other parts of the UK. So now if you have something like this, you have all the other validation, but you also have this extra validation. So this now still works. But if I go and say that it's someone from, I, I don't know, K Kent, I don't know what's the Kent postcode. Why would you go to Kent? Anyway, so yeah, sorry, mate, only Londinians here. So extra logic. And of course, this logic can use multiple properties of the object. It doesn't have to be just one. So if you want to combine the logic of the name, the email and whatever, and I'm suspecting the validation context includes the service provider because you might be able to resolve services as well. I haven't tested that yet, so don't quote me on that. But you have so much power now with something like this where you can just combine the validation logic for the entire object into one method. So that is awesome. I'm glad that Microsoft aspires to have something really, really nice built in for validation where it aspires. Oh, we just launched an Aspire course on Dome Train, and today is the last day for 40% discount. Every course, including that Dota and Aspire course teaching you everything for Dota and Aspire is 40% off. Code Beth Day 2, link in the description below. But let's talk about an extra thing you can have for validation because let's say you want custom validation on the property level. How can you do that? Well, you can go ahead and create a public class called, let's say that I want to make sure that this name is not any of my family members. So no chapsas is allowed. Let's say non chapsas over here, non chapsas attribute. Here we go. And that has to implement or extend the validation attribute. So once we have this, we can go ahead and override a few items. So I'm going to override the is valid. And what I can say is if value is string, and let's say that this is presumably the name, then return value or name ends with chapsas because this needs to be inverted. So it does not end with chapsas. Otherwise, return false. So now no chapsas are allowed if I use this attribute. However, I don't want to return a generic error message back that's generated by .NET. So I'm going to say format error message over here and I can say return nice try name, but no chapsas is allowed by say that. And then I can go to the name and I can say, hey, non chapsas. So if I just run this now and I go ahead and I go back to Insomnia and I say, hey, create this application. Of course, this has to go back into a UK uh, code. This is not a UK code still to an X. Here we go. This is it. A nice try name, but not chapsas allowed. Oh, name is actually the property name, not the name you provided. That is interesting. I'm wondering if there's an override to get the name. No, there isn't. Well, that's annoying. And I'm wondering if I'm missing something because this would make sense to be the name you passed down. But apparently the name is the name to include in the formatted message. This is OK, Microsoft. This is as fix the documentation. What is this? I don't understand what you're talking about. I know it's in preview. I know it's in preview. OK, so the name apparently would be the property name or the name of the thing you're validating. That's confusing. I don't quite like that. In any case, you can see that this now works. And if I go ahead and I say over here that no, it's actually Nick. Poop. I don't know. Then you can run it and you know this works. So this is just awesome. I really, really like the built-in implementation. In the beginning, I was very skeptical about them adding something, but I think they did it really well. Of course, all of these things can also work on the API request level. So if you wanted to say required here, this will also work and all of the other stuff will work here as well. And also, if you want to disable validation for a specific endpoint, you can just say disable validation and now it won't be validated. That's everything they added. That's everything you need to know. I think it's awesome. I think Microsoft did a great job. Please fix the documentation and the rest, I think, is great. But I want to know from you, what do you think about this? Leave a comment in the description down below, letting me know if you think validation should exist in minimal APIs or they should just be bare bones and nothing. And what else do you want to see in this implementation? Because Microsoft will watch this video and get the feedback to use for the product. 
Thank you very much for watching. As always, keep coding.